Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I've got eight bags that I wanna show you. And unfortunately, this is a bit of a confession. And the confession is, these are eight bags that I've not really been reaching for lately. In fact, I can't remember the last time that I used these bags. Um, not that it's been years or anything like that, but it's been several months. And I don't know if that just means I have too many handbags now and I can't get them all through my rotation or if I really gravitate towards some of my other bags in my collection and these are now neglected. So let's just get into them and then you let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are because if you've been with me for a while then you know I've sort of gone through different waves of loving a bag and then falling out of love and then falling back in love and I think there's also seasons where it makes more sense to grab a bag and seasons where it makes sense to leave it in the closet. So I'm just going to start in no particular order. This one here is from Dior. It's my only Dior bag and you guys will know which one this is if you have been here before. This is my Lady Dior. It's the ABC Lady Dior in the small size in this beautiful blush color. And this color is actually what got me. I had tried on the Lady Dior several times and I tried different sizes and different colors. But this color is what sold me the day that I bought this. It's the blush and I just think it's such a pretty neutral, but you guys know I've made a few videos on this and I did a whole video on my love-hate relationship with this bag and I know that love-hate sounds very dramatic, hate is too strong of a word, but I sometimes really adore this bag because I think it's quite exquisite. It's very much a form of art and it has so much history and heritage, starting with the late Princess Diana and this is sort of like the modernized version with the thicker strap. I was able to choose charms of my liking that were included as part of the ABC Lady Dior collection. And this is what it looks like with the flap. And I think it's a really pretty bag, but I just, for all the reasons that I've mentioned in previous videos, I just don't reach for this as much. I also feel like it's very ladylike. You know, I think it's very prim and proper. Although I do wear this with jeans and sneakers, crossbody, I'll dress it down. But I think just the silhouette and also who it's associated with, again, the late Princess Diana, it does have more of a kind of elegant, ladylike vibe to it. And that doesn't suit my lifestyle on a regular basis because I'm just a mom running around town. So yeah, this has been one of the lesser used bags. And I don't know if I'm gonna let it go or keep it because I have changed my mind on this quite a bit, you guys know. And so far I've been holding on to it. I had actually put it in the box, put it all in the packaging to make myself believe that I had already let it go, just to see if I would miss it. I really didn't actually. But then some of you recommended that I take it out of the packaging and have it in plain sight so that I would reach for it more. And that actually did help. I did reach for it quite a few times more after I put it out in plain view. But then since then I've packaged it back up again. So I don't know, I'm having some internal handbag conflict on this one. So let me set this aside for now. Okay, this one is really gonna sh shock you guys, I think, because this is always in my top used or one of my favorites. And this is the Pochette Matisse from Louis Vuitton. And I still think this silhouette is so classic. I love the structure of it, the shape, this S-lock the compartments. This to me is the most ideal design with the crossbody strap so you can be hands-free as someone who's like busy and just running around everywhere and also as a mom. When my kids were younger, it was so easy. You just pop your phone back here. It's really well organized, so there's really no way to mess this up. There's no way to, you know, overstuff it or not be able to find your things in it. You've got all these compartments. You've got another compartment here. So the design is, is great. I just don't know why, honestly, why I haven't been reaching for this. I don't know if it's the monogram or if it's, I, you know, I don't know. This I'm having some trouble understanding. Some of you have asked me for an updated review on this bag, especially uh, one of you recently asked me, about how the apple guard was holding up. I did spray the Vachetta leather as soon as I purchased this, which was almost four years ago now. And I've worn this out in the rain, snow. And you can see up close, there are some tiny little watermarks, but for the most part, it looks still really, really nice and clean. And that is because the apple guard protected it. So I sprayed it maybe once or twice. Haven't really kept up with it. Should probably layer another 
coding at some point, but since I'm not reaching for it, it hasn't been a priority at the moment. So let me know if you guys are shocked. And there goes the Lady Dior. That's one of the things. It always tips over like that. It doesn't sit up on its own very easily unless it's full of stuff to like weight it down. This one, ta-da! Yes, it's a classic flap. It's a medium classic flap in the beautiful beige Claire, which I know is still very much sought after, sometimes really hard to find new in the boutiques. And it's got the gold hardware. This is the only Chanel where I have the bright gold hardware. The other Chanel bags that I have either are silver hardware or the lighter champagne gold. But this I think is very much complementary with the beige Claire caviar leather and the really stunning bright yellow gold. However, I don't reach for this that much and I think it's both the size, the medium size, and also the color. So let me explain. The medium size to me is kind of like this in-between. doesn't hold all that much because of the double flap. It holds a decent amount, but I have my minis and the minis hold my essentials. So I, I tend to gravitate more towards my minis. And this one just feels more serious. I don't know if it's the color combination. And sometimes I'm going to have to admit that this specific bag, the way it looks, as beautiful as it may be, sometimes it feels very dated. Yeah, I said it. it. Feels really dated and sometimes I think it ages me. Like I'll be wearing, you know, a cute little outfit and then I put this on and I feel like I immediately look 10 to 20 years older. Somehow this bag does that. Not always, not with every outfit, but sometimes I do feel that and then I'll just switch out my bag because I don't love the way it looks with my whole ens ensemble. This is my other Chanel Classic flap in the medium size, same size, but this is a vintage. Now this one has always been in my lesser used category. Whenever I do my most and least used handbag updates every year, for some reason this is in the lesser used. And I guess because I don't consider this medium size like an everyday size, it's very cumbersome to wear on one shoulder if I'm running around and if I do it like this crossbody it's fine but it sits up high I think everyone knows that the chain length on the mediums are not really meant for crossbody I happen to be very small chested so it works fine but if you have even like a medium to larger chest this thing's going to look like a book just bouncing against your chest it's going to be sticking out it's going to look funny unless you're really petite so if i have to i'll make it work and i might sometimes wear it crossbody and turn it to my back but that's not exactly the right look either <laughs> and it's not exactly the most secure way to wear a bag you know on the back side i will say between these two i've kind of waffled back and forth this is caviar obviously lighter color this is lambskin flatter quilting because this is over 20 years old i hunted this down i love the flat cc hardware i just feel like i don't know it's something about vintage and plus the price that i paid was amazing the price i paid on this too although it was quite high it feels like a steal considering the current price is at ten thousand dollars now which is insane to me but i feel like I've talked about this before where I felt like I should let at least one of these go, but I've not been in a rush. There's nothing really pushing me to, so I've been procrastinating. But I think that at least one of these will need to go at some point because if I'm not reaching for either of these very often, then why am I holding on to both? I think the only reason I'm holding on to both of them is because I have a daughter and you never know when she gets to be of a certain age she might say oh I really like that bag and if I let it go I might feel bad about it I know it's kind of a silly reason but that's where my mom brain goes and the other reason is because I know I will never buy another classic flap again from the boutique because I don't think they're worth the prices right now especially with the uh, quality decline so especially when I look at the vintage I think you know this was a find I paid a good price for it and I had to hunt down this color combination. It's hard to find, it's harder, I should say, to find the black lambskin with silver hardware. There's so many more with the gold hardware, the 24K gold plated hardware from the vintage era. So, you know, that's what's kind of holding me back. And this, I'm thinking, you know, it's the only really light beige color bag I have. So I sort of talk myself out of it. But the rational, practical side of me is kind of thinking, you know, I'm not a hoarder. I, I like to have these bags so I can actually enjoy them. And if I really find that I'm not using them for so long, then I probably will decide to just let one or both go. So let me know what you guys think. 
either talk me off the ledge or talk me into letting them go. I'd love your opinion. This one is my Gucci. Probably another one that you guys are surprised by. And I think this just means I have a lot of bags at this point. I don't have as many bags as some of the other major, you know, YouTubers that we see out there, but I have a lot of bags for the average person. So maybe as much as I think this is such a cutie pie and I raved about this and I did a full review on it and I think it's such an amazing bag because you get your bang for your buck if you want Gucci with the coated canvas, durable, almost like indestructible. It's got the structure. You can put all your essentials in here. It's got the strap to wear it crossbody. You can use this for errands, for going to crowded places when you're traveling or amusement parks if you're a mom and you don't have to worry and it's just really nicely made actually kudos to gucci because not a lot was really catching my eye from gucci for many 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 years and you guys might remember that gucci was the very first designer brand that i started buying handbags from when i was in my early 20s so i have an affinity towards the brand but they really their style was just kind of too out there for me too bold for me and this felt very retro very classic the horse bit detail and so i think it's so adorable and i'm i don't think i'm ready to let this go but i am perplexed as to why i'm not using it and i, I wonder if it's because again the monogram i feel like that's the same thing with the pochette matisse i'm just not gravitating towards the monogram these days and also i feel like i am carrying a little bit more than Normally I don't carry that much, but lately I've been getting very liberal with how much I carry. And this is a compact bag, so you can't fit a whole lot in here. You can fit just your essentials. So you have to be thoughtful about what you want to carry in this kind of bag. I still think it's a great bag. So there's that. And then this one is another Louis Vuitton bag that is really special because it's seasonal, limited edition. Never will this be available again from the boutiques and it's unique because it's lambskin and it's got the very subtly embossed monogram so it's not like in your face it's not for example as noticeable as the traditional canvas monogram but i don't know why i, I think this bag is so beautiful but i don't know why i'm not reaching for it i wonder if because to me the speedy silhouette is very much a travel workhorse kind of bag and even though this is a speedy silhouette it's lambskin and it's more dressy and it's got this gorgeous jewel like jewelry like chain this is what really got me this chain and this chain makes it so versatile you can dress it up you can dress it down you can remove the chain i've shown in previous videos that you can double up and triple up the chain so you can even make this into like a short shoulder bag yes or just use it as an embellishment to have it dangle so this is really 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 playful and i think it's nicely done i was shocked that it was out for such a short period of time and then they they discontinued it it was just such a short season it's beautiful. I have absolutely no complaints about the bag. And you can see in terms of wear and tear, it's holding up almost like brand new. And I've had it for a while. I bought it as soon as it came out. And now we have the Speedy B20 and, you know, very similar variations. But I think this one is, in my opinion, the most beautiful. And yet I'm not reaching for it. And I think if I had to explain, I think it's because when I think of Speedy again, it's the workhorse Speedy. So, for example, this one here is my Speedy B35. And this too, I have not been reaching for. Let me explain. I wore this a lot for travel, for short travel, short trips. Um, fits very nicely under the airplane seat. It fits nicely in the, the trunk of your car. Like it's just great. And it's good for like one night. If you're going on a short trip, you can put all your stuff in there. I've shown packing videos with this. And then I bought the Tumi travel tote, which I don't have in front of me, but it's just like a simple nylon travel tote that has a luggage sleeve. I've been using that so much when we travel and it's carefree and it's not designer. It's not in your face. I don't have to worry about it. So this has not really been getting that much use but the reason why i'm having a hard time letting this go is because it's such a great bag and i did get such wonderful use out of it when i traveled with it before i got the to me tote and it's so well made and unfortunately we can't say that about all the louis vuitton canvas bags i had to go through several several of them to get this one and many of them had quality issues whether there were issues with the canvas or the piping or some weird smell um, but this one straight from the boutique beautiful and it's just you see a lot of wonky speedies out there 
And so I know it's kind of irrational, but because it's so well made and I know it would be hard for me to find another one, especially I'm not going to pay today's prices. This was pre several price increases ago. It's made in France. So I'm like, you know, that's why I talk myself in and out. And as much as I consider myself a very practical person, when it comes to handbags, because I do like handbags so much, I start to get irrational, as you can see. So I do have a Speedy B, same exact print in the 25 size that I've been using a lot more. And this one in the 35 has been kind of sitting out. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think so far. The last one is back there. It's from Hermes. And this one, you're going to have to guess if it's my Birkin or my Kelly. I think by the size of the bag, you know it's not my Mini Evelyn. And the Mini Evelyn I use a lot. It's a very easy grab-and-go bag. This one here, take a guess. If you're at this point in the video, leave me a comment if you think it's the Birkin or the Kelly. I'm curious what you guys think. You guys know I only have one each. And I said that I don't want any more because I'm more than happy to have one each. And I don't want to accumulate a mountain you know, a huge collection of these bags. I'm not really a collector, I'm a user. So it's the Kelly. And this is my Kelly 28 in the Retourne with the gold hardware and it's all stuffed at the moment. And the strap is in there, let me put this down. The bag is beautiful. You guys know I did a lot of research before I went and asked for this bag. And I was happy. And I'm still grateful to have this bag. It's beautiful. I love that it's retourné. I love the, the size is really practical. It's a little big for me, I have to say. It's a little bit big because with the strap, it kind of bounces against me and I have a, a, a kind of a narrow frame, but it's a really good size of 28. And the color I had asked for a neutral at the time, if you guys re might remember, and it's a definitely a neutral color. It's called Gris Meyer. It was the newest color that they released that year that I got this last year. And it's beautiful. It's like an elephant gray. Sometimes in different lighting, it has like green undertones and it looks really nice against other neutrals. I sometimes wear this with all black and this kind of pops because it has more of a subtle shade versus being black, right? But I don't own any other gray bags. You guys know that. And so I've had to warm up to this color. And sometimes I think it's so beautiful and just really chic. And other times I'm like, ah, I don't know if it's my color. So that sometimes prevents me. Like recently I grabbed this and then I looked at myself in the mirror with my outfit. And I was like, mm, no. And I put it back. Yeah. And I reached for a different bag, which was my Chanel Jumbo, which is black. So I don't know if this is something that I'm going to grow to really enjoy more and more as I get older or if that's just never going to happen and maybe I should just be brutal and cut it loose. I know that sounds crazy. It's my one Kelly. I do enjoy my Birkin. It's not a bag that I use often, either of them, because they're bigger and they're Hermes bags that are kind of out there that, you know, I don't like it depends on where I'm going. I'm not going to take my Birkin or Kelly to the supermarket, for example. But if I'm going out for a dinner, girls' night out, and I need to put a little bit more, yes, I'm also not the type to bring this bag if I'm only going to carry like a lipstick and my keys and they're jiggling around in there. I need to make use of the bag. So I will usually take them when I am carrying enough to fill at least half or more of the bag, you see? So that, I don't know, like I, yeah, you can tell I'm conflicted. Just sitting there, it looks so pretty. I took the twilly off and I feel like it looks... I like the way it looks. It looks very sophisticated without the twilly and then with the twilly wrapped around the handle, it looks more playful and cute. So kind of can experiment that way. But these are the eight bags with the Lady Dior falling over and then the Pochette Matisse, the two classic flaps, the Gucci horse bit, Speedy BB, Speedy B 35. And as I'm touching it, I'm thinking, I can't let this go. And then the Kelly 28, which looks so special just sitting there. But yeah, if I was to be completely honest and just confess where we are today with my bags, these are the bags that I'm just not reaching for nearly as much as I would like to. And these are the bags that sometimes I do reach for, but then I quickly put them back and I swap them out for a different bag. So do you think that just means I have too many bags or do you think that I'm going through a phase where maybe... Right now, these aren't it for me, but in six months time, these will be it for me. You know, um, I've always said, be really thoughtful about when you let go. Of course, be thoughtful when you buy something and bring something into your closet or into your life. But I almost feel like you have to be equally or even more thoughtful when you let go, because once you own something and you've enjoyed it for a while and you've created memories with it, 
the the value in your mind goes up. You know, it's irrational, but it becomes yours. There's a little bit of attachment, and if you let go of it prematurely, or you make a decision that you wind up regretting, then that that will stink. And I've fortunately I have not ever had to regret. My decision to sell or let go or donate or give away any of my bags it always felt good. So that's why I'm just being careful because I want to stay on that streak. But yeah, this is how I'm feeling. I don't know. I mean, now I'm looking at these two and I'm thinking, one of these has to go, right? I don't know. But then the prices keep going up, and like I said, I have a daughter. Maybe she'll want it one day. But that also seems silly. Maybe she won't want any of my bags one day. Maybe she won't care for bags, or maybe she'll want to buy her own bags.、Um, It's a lot of like guessing, and it sounds like I'm overthinking because I am overthinking. <laughs> so anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. At least you got some eye candy out of it. Let me know what you guys think if you have any particular opinions or advice, and if you have bags as well in your own collection that you're also just not gravitating towards. And how you feel? Are you just going to hang on to them? Are you thinking about letting them go? If so, why? And if not, why? Like, why do you hang on to something that you're not using? I would love to know. This is all just for handbag enthusiasts out there. I know that this is all like first world problems, all silly stuff. But we're here to just have fun. So if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.